our Gospel Prophets 16, episode 16, as we continue with our study through the book of Colossians, um, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. And today we are going to focus on verse 5, from verse 5 of, our, of, of Colossians chapter 3. And uh, if I'm to give this a theme, I would call it the new man, okay, because we've talked so much about the new life, okay, and now we want to talk about the new man. And uh, previously we said uh, that um, a good Christian is a dead one, okay? That uh, it is impossible for us to set our minds above when we are still alive. We've got to die in order to live and set our sights on heavenly realities. Because if you look at carnal kind of Christians, they don't understand things like, uh, they, they don't set their sights on heavenly realities. They can't live uh, on present truth for them the, the things concerning the world is, 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 is their reality but to us who are dead we understand that um, we live by this present truth we, we've set our minds on things above and what the word of God says we go for it okay now <clears throat> let's speak on from verse 5 because from today I'm, I'm just going to take an extra minutes because I want to start covering very many verses we have a lot to cover we have um the book of ephesians to come revelation and all these things so we need to move fast okay so bear with me from today but it's for our benefits because one hour 10 minutes one hour 20 minutes and you have the whole week to study that's little okay that's little glory to god so <clears throat> verse 5 the bible says therefore put to death your members which are on the earth then he names it fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Now, covetousness is being separated. Covetousness, which is idolatry. And I'll come back to that. Verse 6. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. Verse 7. In which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. Hallelujah. So, He's saying, firstly, that put to death, okay? To put to death means that you're depriving them of their power. You're depriving uh, fornication of its power. You're depriving anger or bitterness of its power. Because sometimes you can deprive these things of its power when you share with somebody. I'll give an example. There are people who have things in the inside that they feel like sharing. They're eating them up, okay? And chikuluma, chikutuze chidiao, instead of you getting somebody, a friend that you can confide in and share with them this thing that is eating you up, uh, and, 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 and the more you keep it, the more you, you magnify it and the more it kills you. But the moment you share it out, you relieve it of its power to take a hold of your life. So sometimes it's good to just share with people the things that are eating you up. That's just, that's just wisdom. That's just wisdom so some of you let me tell you something that thing that is eating you up just walk to a friend who can understand you whom you confide in and share it because you empty it of its power you'll feel a whole weight lifted up when you share but here when we say put to death we are depriving it of its power in a sense that the word put to death there in uh, the greek word is necro okay to make us dead to render weak Okay, you render fornication weak, you render anger weak, you, you render it impotent, it becomes impotent. You are dead to it, that you, don't, you deprive it of its power. Okay, the Amplified Version says, <clears throat> of verse 5, So kill, deaden, deprive of power, the evil desire lacking in your members, those animal impulses, and all that is earthly in you that is employed in sin. I like it when it says those animal impulses hallelujah i like how the amplified version brings it because i can tell you something to be carnally minded is death to be spiritually minded is life and peace a man that is spiritual and a man that is carnal a man in christ and a man outside christ and i can give you the difference between a man in christ and a man outside christ a man outside christ is just like an animal they have those animal impulses 
That is what leads them. So if somebody is not in Christ, I don't care how much good they are. I don't care, I don't care the moral fabrics of their society and everything they do. They are just like an animal. They live that kind of the animal life. They are controlled by their body. Okay, so don't, don't, don't be like animals and let the body control you. Don't be controlled by your body doing whatever you feel like whenever you feel like it. Now, many of us, we are moved like that. We just do things as we feel like and whenever we feel. If you want to wake up, if you don't want to wake up, that's okay. You feel like going to church, you go to church whenever you feel like it. You forgive people whenever you feel like it. Okay? For you, you're moved by feelings, animal impulses. Okay? And, 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 and many people are like that. So you, you, you do things... Doing things, doing things, whatever you feel like, whenever you feel like, and grabbing whatever attracts your fancy. Okay, whatever you like, you, you just go for it. Have you seen those guys who go for shopping? Everything that they, catches their eye, they buy. Food, they just buy. And there are those who, when they have money, let me tell you something, before you know it, money is gone. Why? They've seen a shoe, they've seen a car, they've seen a lady, they've seen what? And it's fancy in their eyes. And before you know it, they have spent their money and it is gone. Hallelujah. Those are guys who, are, who live the animal life. They are moved by animal impulses. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So refuse to be controlled by your body when it is time to wake up, for example, for your devotions. Okay. I know other people and I've been there. They set the alarm at three. And when the alarm goes, you find them, you know, putting off the alarm and they set it back to 3.30 and then it goes and they put it back to 4.30 before you know it, it is 6 or 7 a.m. Why? Because they've allowed their body to control them when it is time to wake up. But refuse. They refuse. Hallelujah. And I know of some people, okay, who can't sign up for the Ask Hour. This prayer altar that I started every day, 5 a.m. to 6 a.m., and guys will be like, Pastor Adrian, <laughs> I would really love to be part of that ask hour. But mm -mm 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 -mm, 5 a.m., that's where sleep is so deep. Hallelujah. And so they can't sign up. They can't wake up. They can't control their body because 5 a.m., they still need to be in bed sleeping. And if there are those who are like, you know what? We shall wake up and pray. Hallelujah. But that is you failing to control your body. And doing things whatever you feel like, whenever you feel like, and grabbing whatever attracts, attracts your fancy. So if you just really can't wake up for devotions, then that's a life that is shaped by things and feelings instead by God. That for you, whenever you, you're moved by what the body feels like, then you are shaped by things and feelings instead of by God. This is the animal life. That's a man outside Christ. Now it is sad that a man in Christ He's the one who's living like a man outside Christ. They are moved by the animal impulses. It's not good. It's not a good testimony. Come on, guys. Let's be led by the Spirit. For they that are led of the Spirit, these are the true sons of God. The sons of God there is the mature sons of God. So guys, those who are mature are led of the Spirit, not by feelings. Glory to God. So then he comes and names those things. But he says something very profound. He talks about covetousness, which is a sin of idolatry. And that is where I want to lay my emphasis also on in this, in, in this episode. So, covetousness is something. Covetousness is personified as one of the deadly sins. And it is important you understand the sin of idolatry, meaning it has been personified as one of the deadly sins. And I'm going to explain why covetousness is one of those deadly sins. Because... All greed and covetousness, okay? In other words, it is, it is idolatry. It is the deifying of self and other created things instead of God. Hallelujah. So, covetousness takes the place of God. It takes the place of God. And the Greek word there of covetousness is pleonexia. Pleonexia in Greek, which means three things. Avarice. A-V-A-R-I-C-E. Avarice. Okay, so when we talk about, when we say covetousness, we're talking about avarice. And then the next one is aggression, as we're going to see. It, it also means aggression. Okay, covetousness also means desire for advantage. Hallelujah. So three things there. One, avarice. And avarice is, um, how do I say it? Avarice is that insatiable desire for wealth. It is that... Uh, 
that extreme greed for material wealth. That's avarice. That's covetousness. The extreme greed, extreme greed for material wealth. There's a de that desire for great wealth. The extreme greed for material wealth is what Paul is calling idolatry. Covetousness is a sin of idolatry. Now, First Timothy chapter 6, verse 17, from verse 17, the Bible says, Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. You see that? Nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Come on, God has given us everything to enjoy, not to rule us, not to enslave us, but to enjoy. Enjoy your house, enjoy your car, enjoy your possessions, okay? But don't let them take the place of God in your life. Verse 18, let them do good that they be rich in good works, ready to give and willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. Glory to God. Okay, we have a, a slogan in Ahava Ministries for those who want to partner with us. We say, hashtag I am Ahava, hashtag I am rich. And we say, a truly rich person is one who is ready to give and willing to share. That is a partner who wants to be part of this ministry. But let's come back here. He says, don't nor trust in uncertain riches, meaning that riches are uncertain. So you can't put your trust in something that is uncertain. Now, Paul is not telling the rich people to forsake their wealth, but to keep their wealth and ensure that their trust is in God alone, not God and wealth. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Okay. What does it profit you if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? But let me tell you something. I'm going to gain the whole world. And not even lose my soul. Are you understand what I'm saying? I have both. I want to go to heaven as one who is truly rich, gain the whole world, but again with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, covetousness. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, the Bible says, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You can't. You can't serve God and mother. That extreme desire for material wealth. You can't. Glory to God. This is why covetousness is, 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 is a deadly sin. Okay? So, it is sad that in the church today, we, we, have, we have many people who worship God and serve mammon at the same time. Because it's possible for you to, to, to fear God and again serve mammon at the same time some of us mammon has taken the place of god in our lives but we are still christians it has enslaved us monday to monday we are working and we have no place for a relationship with god we have no place to commune with god why because we are so busy working to take care of our bills that's mammon that is serving mammon and god help us so covetousness yes avarice but also it is aggression that is a feeling of hostility that arouses thoughts of attack. That feeling of hostility that arouses the thoughts of attack. And now this explains the reason of avarice, that desire for wealth. And that is what we see in the world today. Have you seen, I've seen videos where uh, we see people in, uh, in jam and we see these guys who walk around the streets and go and grab phones and grab bags of people. That's, that's what I'm talking about, aggression. That, that, that feeling of hostility that arouses thoughts of attack. Why? Because you want to amass yourself some sort of, some sort of wealth. Okay? That is mammon. That's aggression. Now, that's very bad. The third one is the desire for advantage. That is the quality of having a superior or more favorable position. That's also covetousness. So we've seen three places. We've seen avarice. We've seen um, um, aggression, and then we have seen the desire for advantage. Look at guys who amass themselves wealth. It's for fame and power, because they know with power, they have a superior position. With, with fame, they have a superior position. So they will, they will make sure that they amass themselves lots of money to have that advantage over other people. But this is not of any child. Of God. That's why I'm focusing so much on this other side, the members of your bodies, okay? <clears throat> but listen, friends, we are not to compete with people, okay? 
A man who competes has not known his field because in his field he will find out that the harvest is plentiful. I can't compete for the flock. I can't compete for people with my pastor friend in the church. Oh, he has taken my friend. I've taken his flock. He's taken my members. No, I don't. I can't compete with you for people. My pastor friend, I can't. Why? Because that means I've not understood my field. Because in my field, the harvest is worth plenty. How are you understanding what I'm saying? So. Even so, when it comes to material wealth, we're not competing to be the richest man in Babylon or to be the richest man in the community. No, everyone has got their space to be whatever God can be. There's room enough in Christ for us to be whatever we can in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So don't compete and don't amass yourself wealth for position or for power. Okay, Jesus says in Luke chapter 12, verses 15, that Take heed and beware of covetousness. Beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. Guys, let me tell you something. Your life does not consist in the amount of the possessions that you have. You have 600 cars. You have 400 billion. You have these. No, your life does not consist on that. But what? It consists on your rich relationship that you have with God. That's the riches. That's the true riches. Now, am I saying that we don't amass ourselves? No, but I'm just saying that your life does not consist of on the abundance of the possessions that you have, but upon your rich relationship that you have with God. How is your relationship with God? Is it vibrant? Is it increasing? Is it intimate? That is true wealth. Hallelujah. And also we've seen covetousness in the church, especially with pastors and who have amassed great wealth from from the flock. But listen, a true shepherd, a true pastor, a true man of God, a true man of God does not seek, seeks not to fleece the flock of God, but seeks to feed the flock of God. If you're a true man of God, you don't fleece the flock of God, you feed the flock of God. That's why I, I, I pride in feeding the flock of God. I'll make sure that they have your bread of life every day. I'll make sure that I walk through them through gospel prophets. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I'll make sure that I teach on Friday fellowships and I'll teach on Sunday. I want to feed my, my flock with the word of God because that's what God has called me to. But we have people in church who are fleecing the flock of God. Second Peter chapter 2 from verses 1, I'm going to read for us and we see them. He says, But there were, there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them and bring on themselves swift destruction. Verse 22, verse 2, And many will follow their destructive ways, because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. Then verse 3, And through covetousness, you see that? Through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Okay, with faint words, they will make merchandise of you. Uh-oh, there are pastors who make merchandise of people. They know how to make money. They know how to get money. They know how to trick money from the flock. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. They, they can exploit you with deceptive words. In other words, in their greed, they will make up clever lies to get hold of your money. And you know them. They focus so much on giving, 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 giving than the word. You can, you can see it. And when the screen, they talk so much about giving, 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 and less of the word. Uh, and those are signs. Those are signs. You see, they are not really after feeding you. They are after fleecing you. How much can I get from you? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible tells us to flee from idolatry. And to flee from idolatry means that we flee from covetousness. And that's very important because covetousness is spiritual idolatry. And that is why it is an important thing here. It is spiritual idolatry. Okay, It is the giving of that love and regard to worldly wealth which are due to God. Only what is of God, then you give it away. It takes away the place of God. That's why it is idolatry. Many people have allowed mammon to take the place of God in their lives. Amen. Let's continue. Verse 8. But now 
you yourselves are to put off all this, all this. Then he says, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language. Oh, you can call it dirty talk. Filthy language out of your mouth. Verse 9, do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. Verse 10, and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. In verse 11, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, uncircumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. I like verses 8 to verses 11. Okay, put off these in your names. And let me tell you something. Ever about yourself. Have you put off anger? Have you put off wrath? Have you put off blasphemy? Dirty talk. Can you imagine Christians with full of dirty talk? They like using the F word. And they can use other words. And you're like, mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. And that's a Christian. But we're going to focus so much on this part. Put off the old man with his deeds. And then put on the new man. Okay? And then, but Christ is all and in all. And then we shall see where we can go. Hallelujah. So, to put off is to actually put off the old man with his deeds that have been mentioned, like anger, like fornication, like all these things. Put off those things. I see. I like, I like what the message version says of verse 8. But you know better now. But you know better now, so make sure it's all gone for good. You know better. As a child of God, you know better. Dirty talk cannot come out of your mouth. Anger shouldn't be your, your character. These things that I've just said, malice and blasphemy, these things should be gone out of you. Okay? It's, they, should be, they should not be hard from you. Okay, Paul says that when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. In other words, I put off the old man and then I have put on the new man. I have the character of the new man, which we shall see next week on episode 17. Okay, but that is it. In other words, listen, you have given up your old way of life with its habits. And I just want to ask you that question. Have you given up your old way of life with its habits? Oh, when they look at you, they still say, but if so-and-so is a Christian, then I am still a Christian. Now, some of you, you were, you, you were battling with anger before you gave your life to Christ, but you're still battling with the same thing. Some of you were fighting with, 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 with theft, but you're still having the same thing. What has changed? It's five years, it's ten years. You still talk the same, you still act the same, you still dress the same. Uh, uh, you, your old way of life is still alive. You've not reckoned yourself to be dead. Paul is saying, come on, put off those things and put on the new man. Give up the old way of life with all its habits. You still dress with your trousers down and you're bouncing and the way you walk. And I'm like, Mm-mm, there's something that is wrong, there's something that is missing. Okay, you have stripped off, you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. If any, if, if, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, the old has gone, the old nature, that old way of life, the way you used to think, the way you used to act, it's all gone. You are a new man. It's a new you. You've got to change. Where there was anger, come on, there's now the fruit of the spirit, which is love and joy and kindness and peace and joy. That's the new you. That is what you should put on. Come on, guys. We have been transformed into the likeness of his son. The message version of verse 9 says, Don't lie to one another. You, you're, you're done with that old life. It's like a filthy, a filthy set of ill-fitting clothes you have stripped off and put in the fire. I like the way he gives an illustration. You have this wardrobe and every cloth there is ill-fitting. It is ill-fitting. They don't fit you. Would you go ahead and put on something that does not fit you? Of course you can't. You put off the old and then you go and look for new clothes. That's exactly what this scripture is saying. You put off these things and go buy new clothes that fit you. Get a character that fits you. Dirty talk doesn't fit you. 
But good talk fits you. Your conversation is full of what? Grace and seasoned with salt. That's what the Bible says. Am I really making sense? So you have all this wardrobe with all ill-fitting clothes. Just put them in a fire. Am I making sense? So put off. When he says put off, in other words, lay off or lay aside or renounce. You renounce the old way of life. You renounce bitterness. You, re you renounce gossip. You renounce anger. You renounce fornication. You renounce all these things. That old way of life you do away with it. Put off means renounce it. So have you renounced that old way of life or you're still fighting with it? Okay. Now, <laughs> if anger is ill-fitting, so you put it off. If dirty talk is still ill-fitting, so you put it off. And go look for something that is fitting. I want to give an illustration of an ill-fitting situation. And you'll bear with me here. Proverbs eleven twenty two, The Bible says, A beautiful woman who acts foolishly is like a gold ring on the snout of a pig. Okay? Beautiful women, I'm with you today. Let me give an example. Do you, do you know how a gold ring find itself in a pig's snout, that, that, that can hold there, okay, of a pig. And imagine gold is there in a pig's mouth. The, the, the gold is not meant to be there. It is ill-fitting to see that there's this beautiful jewelry, this beautiful gold, gold is in a snout of a pig. It's, 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 it's ill-fitting. It's in a wrong place. The gold doesn't fit there. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So is a beautiful woman who acts foolishly. Eh -eh? Eh -eh? Hallelujah. You're finding a beautiful woman by the way she talks. You're finding a beautiful woman by the words that come out of her mouth. It, it is ill-fitting. A beautiful woman who acts foolishly. It is ill-fitting. Now, the message version makes it very clear. Like a gold ring in a pig's snout is a beautiful face on an empty head. Eh -eh. <laughs> Uh oh, a beautiful face on an empty head, a beautiful woman, an empty team. It is ill fitting. You'd expect that with a beautiful face, they don't have this empty head, they, they, they don't act foolish. But that's just something that is ill fitting. That woman is ill fitting. Her mannerisms are just ill fitting. And that's just a way of life. With, 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 with a Christian who has put on the, the new nature and then you're acting, anger is your way of life. That it talk, it's just ill fitting. So when you are battling with the old way of life, come on, it is ill fitting. Put it off. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 13 from verses 11, the Bible says, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. That the night is fast spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Are you seeing that? Put off the old man, and then put on the new man. That is the armor of light. Verse 13. Let us walk honestly. As in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, verse 14, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the last thereof. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh because it is ill-fitting when you walk according to the flesh, when you are ruled by the life of sin, when you are shaped by feelings and not the way of God. So, <laughs> hey, beautiful woman, don't give room for an empty head. <laughs> hey, beautiful Christian, don't give room for the flesh. It's as simple as that. You, old man, don't give room for an empty head with such a dirty talk. I mean, you new man, don't, don't. Don't. Ephesians chapter 4 from verses 22, the Bible says, because I'm showing you the what it means to put off this old man, okay? Ephesians chapter 4 from verses 22. Then ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit. 
spirit of your mind marobakoza be renewed in the spirit of your mind do not be conformed any longer to the patterns of this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind and that's what we're going to talk about later on are you understanding what i'm saying so instead of being ill-fitting just renew your mind okay so put off concerning your former conduct that old man which grows corrupt okay strip yourself of your former nature the old nature and put off and discard your old renewed self now this is a nature issue listen to me friends this is a nature issue the old man with his sinful nature and the new man with the regenerated nature with a new nature glory to god I'm still showing you what it means to put off hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 the amplified version the bible says therefore then since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who have borne testimony to the truth let us strip off you see that let us strip strip off and throw aside every encumbrance the unnecessary weight and that sin which so readily deftly and cleverly clings to and entangles us there is that sin that easily entangles us that sin that cleverly finds its way in our life the good that i want to do i don't do the evil that i hate to do that i find myself doing that evil that sin it's, 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 it's next to you. It's before you every single day. Now, we must get rid of everything that slows us down. Especially the sin that just won't let go. There are those things that just won't let go. Vananga, some of you have tried and, and have tried and have tried, but you find yourself with it. And we must be determined to run the race that is ahead of us. So we have to let these sins let go. I call them parasitic sins. <laughs> and I'll share on that one of these days parasitic sin so strip down start running and never quit Let's put off that guy hallelujah so i'm still talking to us about putting off james chapter 1 verses 21 the bible says so get rid of all uncleanness and the rampant outgrowth of wickedness and in a humble gentle modest spirit receive and welcome the word which implanted and rooted in your hearts contains the power to save your souls the ill-fitting instead of doing that receive and welcome the word the implanted word of God, the engrafted word of God. That's the one you should receive. Be by the word. Because that's how you renew your mind as we're going to see. Okay? You beautiful woman with an empty head. Just renew your mind. You new man with, 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 with ill-fitting clothes. Just renew your mind. If this is a nature issue. Am I really making sense? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, the Bible says, Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Ha, ah, we have a mandate. Day by day. No wonder Joshua was very clear. Okay, you shall meditate on this thing day by day. Imagine what happens to somebody who meditates on your bed of life day by day. Uh oh that's why I make it a mandate to have the word of God every day. As long as you are in this ministry, as long as you're under me and you're walking with me this journey, I guarantee you that you will have the word of God day by day because that's the way we renew this new man, the inward man. Okay, so listen. Read the written word, but also sit under the preached word day by day. Listen to my sermons. Okay? I have sermons of Sundays. I have sermons of Fridays now. I have your bread of life. And listen to them. Listen to them. And they're getting many. Hallelujah. So if I have about 130 something on my YouTube channel, and the best is yet to come. Hallelujah. So that is putting off the old man. Okay? So to put off the old man is to put on the new man. Okay, now I'm coming there. To put off the old man is to put on, is to put on, is to put on the new man. Colossians chapter 3 verses 10, the one we read it says, And I've put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. And I like what the Amplified Version says. It says, And have clothed yourselves with the new spiritual self. Uh oh, that is what I'm talking about. 
that new man that new you is a spiritual self you are spiritual you are a spirit with a soul living in a body that is who you are father son holy spirit holy spirit soul i mean spirit soul and body you, man meets god at the realm of the spirit it is spirit to spirit it's your spiritual self your new life is a spiritual self the, the the new you is a spiritual self the life that you've been raised to is the spiritual life this is eternal life oh, oh. that is it the words that i speak to you they are spirit and they are life that's why my sermons focus so much on who you are the spiritual you blessed with every spiritual blessing that man cannot see that man cannot fall sick that man is not poor you have a nation from on high and you know all things this is your spiritual self that's why i'll keep on talking to your spirit some of you may not understand that's the spirit that is seated in the heavenly places far above principalities the dominions and every name that has been named that is the spirit that has that has been perfected that's the spirit that is holy that's the spirit that does not sin oh karali bakunda zuka that's the spiritual self you must understand who you are jesus is the one that is speak they are spirit and they like this ministry uh, the kingdom of a, of christ is the dispensation of spirit to spirit it is his spirit on my spirit his life on my life the very life of christ the spiritual life is in me hallelujah spiritual self this is a place where ezekiel was taken up and spoke to the dry bones he, tr- he spoke from the realm of which the realm in which we were born to of the spirit and he spoke to the dry bones and the dry bones responded why because somebody spoke from the realm that is higher the spiritual realm that's the realm that you speak to your dead marriage that's the realm that you speak to your dead child that's the realm that you speak to your finances spirit to speak and to respond because they also speak hallelujah your your pockets also speak so speak the word of god they will respond So this new life is this new man is your spiritual self and then he says which is ever in the process of being renewed you see it is in the process of being renewed and remolded into fuller and more perfect knowledge upon knowledge that is it that's how this new man is renewed knowledge upon knowledge is renewed knowledge upon knowledge okay and after the image the likeness of him who created him now you must understand that you are spiritual you are spiritual first corinthians chapter 15 from verses 45 the bible says am i really enjoy- are you enjoying the bible study verse 45 it says and so it is written the first adam became a living being the last adam became a life giving spirit are you seeing that jesus became a life giving spirit the spiritual self that spiritual life that he gave you and verse 46 however the spiritual is not first but the natural and after what the spiritual verse 47 the first man was of the earth made of dust the second man is the lord from heaven okay lord from heaven and was the man and as was the man of dust so also are those who are made of dust and as is the heavenly man so also are those who are heavenly so you are heavenly seated in the heavenly places far above every principality if you go to heaven and don't see me we didn't go there because that's where i dwell and that's where i stay a spiritual self and verse 49 and as we have borne the image of the man of dust we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man for as he is the bible says so are we in this world that is why the messages i preach are spirit and life because of our new nature i focus so much on your identity that's why those who are in my ministry i i i i awaken them to the essence of who they are spiritual okay their identity in christ because that is who they are if you believe right you will think right and you'll act right so this this man this new man is renewed and remolded in the fuller and more perfect knowledge no wonder the bible says first timothy 2 4 this god desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth that's your spiritual self coming to the knowledge of the truth where you know all things epignosis advanced knowledge for i have, for I have an unction from on high and i know all things i know how to sustain a ministry i know how to build a successful ministry i know how to speak to weary souls i know how to make money i know how to do this why because i know all things you know all things hallelujah 
Glory to God. Romans 6 verses 4, the Bible says, Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. That's the new man who walks in the newness of life, the, the freshness of life, fresh revelation, fresh knowledge, fresh opportunities, fresh... Oh, that is your life. you renewed a renewed love for your wife, renewed love for your children. That is your life, fresh work of the Spirit of God in everything that you do. That is your life, the new man in you. Oh, Marema, I'm enjoying myself. Now listen. Each of you, as long as you're in Christ, right? Each of you is now a new person. You're a new person. You are becoming more and more like your creator. And you will understand him better, better, better. The longer you live, the brighter you shine. And you go from glory to glory. Romans 8, 29, the Bible says, For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, to be conformed. You become more and more like Jesus. You become Christ-like. His very life on your life. His very spirit on your spirit. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Christ in me, the hope of glory. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who lives. It's Christ who lives in me. The life that I live, I live by faith. Okay, that faith, that Christ was a visible representation of the invisible God. So I'm also the, in, so I'm also the visible representation of the invisible God. When people look at me, they look at the original purpose in which God created me. Christ in me the hope of glory yes the bible says that if any if anyone is in christ he is a new creation you see that a new creation the day you give your life to christ the day i gave my life to christ uh, i didn't change my color i remained dark dark and lovely i didn't become brown are you understanding what i'm saying i remained dark all things have passed away behold all things have become new but all things have become new. If you did not, if you didn't know math, you would still remain not knowing math. And by the way, if you go to heaven looking for Adrian, who is dark, you won't find me. Hallelujah! You must understand that his spiritual self is not color. Okay. Now, all things have become new. All things have become new. Then he says, "Now all things are of God. These things that have become new, they have become of God. Your so your genes are of God. Your bodies of God." Your blood is of God. Your family is of God. Your thoughts are of God. Your mind is of God. That's why the Bible says you have the mind of Christ because it is of God. All things are of God. I wish you can understand this for a moment. All things are of God. Adrian, Pastor, no, all things are of God. I don't have money. No, all things are of God. Eh, eh. That's why the Bible says that all things are yours. First Corinthians 3. All things are yours. All things that are yours are of God. So all that is of God, all that is God's is mine. It is yours. Because everything that is of God finds its proper place in Christ. And that means everything finds its origin in God. Glory to God. I mean, I love this. I love this. I love this. The message version of verse 10 says, now, remember verse 9 was saying that the ill-fitting clothes? Now, verse 10 it says, now, now you're dressed in a new wardrobe because in verse 9 you threw them up because they were ill-fitting, okay? You threw them. Now you are dressed in a new wardrobe. Every item of your new way of life is custom made by the creator with his label on it. Every item of your new way of life your mind, your thought, your marriage, your children, your business, your dreams, your goal, your vision, how you want to raise your children, your conversations, the profits, everything in your life is custom made by the Creator with His labor on it. Imagine God's labor on your children. How can they be defeated? Imagine God's labor on your business. How can you not make profit? God's labor in your ministry, how can you not grow? God's labor in your mind, how, how can you fail to, not to have the mind of Christ? How can you fail? Are we really understanding this new man? 
Your new way of life is custom made by God with his label on it. Hallelujah. Not Adidas, not uh, 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 these labels here that we have on the planet that are so big. No, 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 no. You have the label of Christ. And if Christ is, uh, and if Christ is in you, how can you fail? So your new clothes are custom made by God, so to speak. So when we say to put on, the Greek word there is endo, 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 okay? To, in the sense of sinking, you're sinking into a garment. You're sinking into Christ. You are being immersed into Christ. You are under Christ. You are in Christ. So you've put on Christ. You are immersed and you are full of Christ. Oh, Marika Tola Kuzama. You are in Christ. You have been immersed. You are wet. Imagine a cloth that is sinked in water. Clothes in water. That's how you are. To put on Christ, it means that you are immersed. You, you are sinking. You've been sinking to come. It is in, in Christ. Oh, 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 oh. That's why your life is hid with Christ. Sickness can't find you because you're deep. You're wet in Christ. Oh, 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 oh. Poverty can't find you because you're in. You're wet. Come on. Are we understanding this thing that I'm saying? Are you understanding the words that are coming out of my mouth? If I were you, I could just take 30 seconds right now and give him crazy praise and thank him that you are in sinking in Christ. The gummy, oh, salabraka, 30 seconds of crazy praise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I know that many people won't do that. You just missed an instruction. 30 seconds of crazy praise to know that you have, you have put on, you are in the, in the sense of sinking into the garment and who is Christ. Oh, oh, oh. Romans 13, 14 says, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision of the flesh. Hallelujah. So, those who have put off the old man have put it off with his deeds. And those who have put on the new man must put on all its deeds. And we shall look at that in the next episode. So, the new man is said to be renewed in knowledge because um, an ignorant soul cannot be a good soul. Eh -eh. An ignorant soul cannot be a good soul. My people perish for lack of knowledge. Without knowledge, the heart cannot be good. Proverbs 19.2 Without knowledge, the heart cannot be good. Hallelujah. So let's move on to this other segment. Christ is all and in all. Eh -eh. Christ is all and in all. The Amplified Version says, In this new creation, all distinctions vanish. I like that. They all vanish. There is no room for, and there can be neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, nor difference between nations, whether alien. There is no difference between nations. America, Canada, Toronto, Semanya, what, and live you. No, no, no. In Christ, there's no difference between nations, whether alien. Barbarians or Scythians, who are the most savage of all, nor slave or free man, but Christ is all and in all, everything and everywhere to all men without distinction of passion, everything and everywhere to all men without distinction of passion, everything and everywhere to all men without distinction of passions. Now, this is a cure of racism. For there's neither black nor white. Now, I feel sorry for those who are trying to look for a cure. A cure is in Christ. The cure is in Christ. Christ is everything and everywhere to all men without distinction of persons. Whether you're green, whether you're black, whether you're white, I just don't care. Christ is all and in all. There is now no difference arising from different country or different condition or circumstances of life. It is as much as the duty of the one as one of the other to be holy, whether you're black or green, to be holy, and as much the privilege of the one as of the other to receive from God the grace to be so. It doesn't matter whether black or white, we all need Christ. We all need salvation. It doesn't matter. It's not about your skin color. Duh. We need God's grace. Last time I was watching a, a video of this white who came in, in, in Karamoja, okay, Moroto, uh, up country for those who do not know in Uganda. And these kids were 
like we're touching the skin and we're removing the hands so quick like that like they were scared of this muzungu and i'm like man they don't know that this one is one and all but that's that's how far we have we have a wrong vision concerning the skin color it doesn't matter whether black or white i'm not in, i'm not intimidated by a white or or, or 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 a green person or character or a nation we are one in christ so it's not the color that matters christ is all that matters and he lives in all of us he's in the white he's in the jew he's in the slave he's in that green person even in uganda here whether muganda whether whether Munyankoli, whether it is salt or whether masoga or whatever it is we are one we are one leave us things for the world but for us we know that we are one galatians chapter 6 verses 15 the bible says the amplified version for neither is circumcision now of any importance nor uncircumcision but only a new creation you see that a new creation the result of a new birth and a new nature in christ that's it the message version would say, can't you see the central issue in all this? It is not what you and I do. Submit to circumcision, reject circumcision. Uh -uh. It is what God is doing and he is creating something totally new, a free life. Glory to God, a free life. And that's the new man. That's the new man. That's the new man. So listen, Christ came to take down all the partition walls okay jew and gentiles they were never at peace with each other but so he came to take down that wall like now he comes to take down that wall between black and white that all might stand on the same level before god both in duty and privilege and for this reason because christ is all and in all you see friends christ is a christian's all for me to live is christ I, in him I live and I move and I have my being. He is my all. He's my own. He's, he's, he's my Lord and he is my Savior. Listen to me as I close about this new man. And you'll appreciate what I'm talking about. Ephesians chapter 2 from verses 14. He says, For he himself is our peace, who has made both one. Talking about Jew and the Gentile. Also put in my mental picture, black and white, okay? Who has made who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, racism, for example, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two. Ah, Listen to me. Created in himself, Christ, one new man from the two, Jew or Gentile, from the two, black or white. Imagine, black and white all one in Christ, uh -uh. thus making peace, verse 16, and that he might reconcile them both to God and in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity, okay, that we see today. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and to those who were, f to those who were near, verse 18, for through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Let's finish it. We, we all have one access by one spirit to the father and so i am done i love this episode i am done and next episode we shall look at the character of the new man glory to god so what's the whole answer today put on the new man with all of its deeds anything that is ill-fitting that beautiful woman with an empty head just it is ill-fitting. Just put on the new man. That is sinking into the garment. Are you in? Are you cloth? Are you being wet? Are you wet? Imagine that cloth that has gone deep and has been soaked by that detergent. That is who you are in Christ. That is the new you. That is the real you. That is the glorified you. That is your life. And we must see the evidence of it. And we, we must see the character which we shall see. Because we focus, we focus so much on the character of the old man. Now we are going to focus on the character of the new man. That is next week. Which is your life. Hallelujah. So, 
I want you to I want to ask for a favor and I'll keep on asking for this favor. Th three things about our culture. Get back to us. Share your standout in the episode. Let us learn. Come on, let us be faithful to instruction. You are a new man. Share in the group, the platform, what you are learning. Number two, send this episode to a friend. Okay, and tell them about this Bible study. And, and number three, invite them. Invite them. Invite them into this space. And tell them about this Bible study, chapter by chapter and verse by verse. Hallelujah. And if you're finding gospel prophets a blessing, I'm going to ask you to partner with gospel prophets with just any amount. Okay? With just any amount. So, precious Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for the simplicity of this Bible study today. It is so simple, so, so simple that we have been blessed, that we have been charged, that we have been energized, that every new way of our life is custom made by you, God with your label in it. So we thank you that we, our life has been labeled Christ. How can we fail? Our businesses, our plans, everything has got the label of Christ that when we walk, they look at Christ. When Satan comes to attack us through sickness, through witchcraft, through depression and all these things, when he stands, well, guess what he will look? He will look at Christ in us the hope of glory, and greater is he which is in us than he which is in the world. Father, I thank you for this Bible study, and it's going to change the trajectory of our spiritual self. We give you praise and give you honor in Jesus' mighty name, and everybody said amen and amen and amen. Put off the ill-fitting life and put on and be soaked and sink into Christ. And before you do what, before you do that, and realize that the best is yet to come. God bless you.